we want to welcome especially all of you who are joining our community for the first time. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take this moment to silence your cell phones or any other devices that may disturb our celebration. In today's Gospel, Jesus speaks to his disciples and teaches us about the heavenly kingdom. He says, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. We should be always ready to meet the Lord. We should not wait to the last minute to have a crisis or for pain and suffering to shake our lives. Today we are invited to entrust our past to God's mercy, our present to his love, and our future to his providence. This Mass is being offered for Dorothea Royer, Junior Dudley Stevenson, Anne Conover, and Juliana L. Rodriguez. Now as we begin our celebration, please stand and greet one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Welcome everybody to our celebration. Lord, our God, our soul is thirsting for you. That is why we have come in looking for you to ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. Because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord, Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Let your word proclaim this thing. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven it would be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish one, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flags of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there might not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourself. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterward, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the doors for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I said to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hours. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, there is a secret, a secret to wearing a shirt. It's one of those things that has to be passed down from generation to generation. It's a secret. Every shirt wearer must to know so I hope uh, you know it. If you don't know it, uh, here it is. Bottom, uh, the first uh, button, correctly. If you do, if you get uh, the first uh, bottom, uh, bottom the right, uh, then the rest uh, will follow suit. If, however, you don't get the first button right, every button thereafter will be buttoned incorrectly. There are certain things in life done only one way. Buttoning a shirt is one of them. Being ready is another. According to Jesus, being ready for his return is a shirt button principle. According to Jesus, start wrong on this first move and the rest of your life will be crooked. Get this right and the rest will fall into place. Miss it and get ready for some wrinkles. How do we know this is a church bottom principle? Jesus preached on being ready for heaven and staying out of hell. It's in today's gospel message where he tells us the parable of the wise and the foolish bridesmaids. 
The wise one were ready when the groom came, and the foolish ones were at the corner store looking for more oil. Be ready. It's a first step, non-negotiable, shared bottom principle. That is the theme of today's parable. So always be ready because you don't know the day your Lord will come. Jesus said, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus calls us to be ready. Upon his arrival, the bridegroom will enter the wedding banquet with those who are ready and will leave out those who are not. Not being included is a sad thing. Not being with our loved ones and participating in the same banquet is a sad thing. My dear friends, to separate people on earth is sorrowful, but to think of it being done for eternity is horrible, especially when one group is destined for heaven and the other group is going to hell. As we come close to the end of our liturgical or church year in November, our readings begin to focus on such topics as death, are we going to heaven, judgment, and the end of the world. Pretty heavy stuff. But these readings are not designed to make us anxious or worried about what will happen to us. Rather, they are designed to help us refocus our attention on what is supposed to be most important to us as Christians, namely, our ultimately goal and destiny. So, here is a literary story to put this all into perspective. While on one on his expedition to the Antarctic, Sir Ernest Shackleton left some of his men on Elephant Island with the intent of returning for them and carrying them back to England. But he was delayed. But the, by the time he could go back for them, the sea had frozen and he had no access to the island. Three times he tried to reach them, but was prevented by the ice. Finally, on his fourth try, he broke through and found a narrow channel. Most to his surprise, he found the crewmen waiting for him, supplies packed and ready to board. They were soon on their way to England. He asked them how they knew to be ready for him. They told him they didn't know when he would return, but they were sure he would. So every morning, every single morning, the leader rolled up his bag and packed his gear and told the crew to do the same saying. Get your things ready, boys. The boss may come today. The crew leader did his crew 
a favor by keeping them prepared. My dear community, Jesus has done us a service by urging us to do the same. Be ready is a shared bottom principle. Get that one bottom right today for you don't want to be fumbling with bottoms in the presence of God. Jesus is calling us to be ready, so let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ the Lord will come to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Filled with faith, we offer our prayers to the Father. For the church, that we might have a spirit of readiness so that we can respond to God's presence and invitations at any moment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly elected leaders, that they might rely on God's divine law as a source of wisdom and build a spirit of cooperation that promotes peace and healing in our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from natural disasters, especially victims of hurricane, Eta, that God will give them strength and speed to that assistance that they need to rebuild their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions presented to God by our community through our line, online prayer requests, and for those remembered on All Souls Day, whose names has been placed in the envelope in the front of the altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially those in our parish and in our families, may God, God, may God grant them healing and restoration. And for all our brothers and sisters who have died, that they might live in the light of the, and peace of God's presence forever. Especially for Dorothea Roger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Merciful God, renew our hearts, inspire our love, transform our actions so that we may be ready for the coming of your Son. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed a man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all this wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, that your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Augustine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed them by divine teaching with dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you worshiping with us uh, through Facebook, I invite at this moment uh, to make a, a spiritual communion. Let us say it together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and united myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. My dear friends, uh, thank you for being with us today. We are glad that you are worshiping with us. For those of you that uh, maybe are visiting uh, our parish community, at this moment I give you uh, some uh, orientation for communion. Communion will only be given on the hand. Receive communion in your hand by preparing a worthy throne for our Lord. Please remember that you have to consume the body of Christ in front of the minister. If you are not going to receive communion, we appreciate that you approach the minister with your hands on your shoulders you will receive a blessing. This is to facilitate the movement of people in the pews. Please do the following in your pews. Lower your mask, use your personal hand sanitizer before communion. You will be instructed to come forward for the recession of Holy Communion by section. We divided our parish in four sections, section A, 
section B that include the parishioners that are sit down at the back, section C and section D. The first two sections that will receive communion today will be section A and C. Please wait on your pews and follow the usher's instructions. Keep a space using signs on floor. Once you have consumed the body of Christ, put your mask back as you return to your seat. Thank you for your attention.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Thank you everybody for being with us today and today, with all due respect, I want to say thank you for our Facebook uh, followers, uh, those of you that are around 300 that are worshiping with us through Facebook. Thank you for being with us. These are our announcements. Formed, the Catholic faith on demand. This is a free resource for parishioners to gain information and the facts about the Catholic faith, how we think, pray, and live. This uh, service is accessible from every computer, tablet, or smartphone. To find out uh, how to access this service, Consult, uh, please, our electronic bulletin or our bulletin that uh, I am pretty sure that uh, some of you really already noticed that we have hard copy of the bulletin now. So, yes, good. So, we are try trying to go normal, trying to go normal. So, pick one, uh, take one home with you. In the bulletin, you will find all our information. Starting this weekend, 
The gift store will open on weekends after all masses. Located in the Parish Life Center, we offer a wide selection of religious items. And today, they have a special sale, 50%, a table with all items 50% off. So take this opportunity and visit our gift store. You can also check our parish bulletin to learn, to learn how to protect yourself from scams. Be careful. There are people sending text messages and emails on my behalf. And remember, I never, never, never will ask you for money through text messages or emails. I will go through the AMBO and I will request from there. So, no by text message or emails, never, never. Also, starting on Monday, November 16, we will reopen the chapel from Monday to Friday after daily mass and until 4.30 in the afternoon. We will continue to follow the recommendations of the state and local governments and health officials. Please note, mask face covering must be worn all the times. Six feet social distancing needs to be maintained. This only allows five people to be inside the chapel at the same time. You must be responsible. If when you enter the chapel, it has reached capacity, please wait outside, but social distancing must be maintained. Out of charity to your brother and sister, also remember that you must constantly use your personal hand sanitizer every time you touch a surface. Please check this weekend's online bulletin for uh, more information. So, this is time to go to the AMBO. Yes. <laughs> My dear community, November, November is the month to give uh, thanks and to think about our future. November is the month when we usually do our stewardship campaign. As your pastor, I want uh, to thank God for all of you. For all of you, you are this uh, family. You form this uh, big family and all make uh, the parish. As I said uh, before many times, we are all St. Augustine. As we all know, COVID-19 pandemic has impacted each of us in different ways and our parish is unfortunately no exception. We have tried to deal with this situation by trying to find new ways and methods that allows us to serve you in a more virtual way. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have broadcast masses on weekends. For example, at the Mass of All Souls last Monday, there were about 70 people present here at church. Do you want to know how many people follow us and worship with us through Facebook? Around 425 people who saw it online. In our parish, we have uh, possibilities of prayer with the Holy Rosary every day in our Facebook page, in English and in Spanish. And the Connect with Your Faith campaign that includes a weekly reflection in preparation for Sunday Masses. 
Our parish also offers free Bible classes and resources through forms to further de develop uh, our faith. So your support is greatly needed and we would appreciate your participation in this initiative this year. Generosity is one of the fruits of the Spirit and St. Paul identifies it in his letter to the Galatians. He said, in contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is charity, joy, peace, understanding of others, generosity, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. We thank all those who have been so generous and continued their financial support to our parish community during this time. At present, our weekly income is not enough to cover our expenses, and we struggle every week. So, what we need? We need to come together to unite more as a parish. We need to pray more, and we need all families to be able to contribute financially and sacrificially. I know many individuals and families may be struggling financially in this time. Please know we are praying for you, and if you need assistance, we are here to refer you to the right resources that can help. So, what we want? For those of you who may still be able to give, we are currently embarking on a new initiative put forward by the Catholic Foundation of Central Florida. This initiative is called uh, the Offertory Recovery and Restoration Initiatives and is aimed uh, at uh, replenishing our offertory to its pre-pandemic level and strengthening our finances. So, what will happen? During the next few weeks, all families, because I want to reach all registered families, will receive a letter from me thanking you for all that you have and will continue to do in helping build up our parish and addressing our needs. It will also help uh, to bolster our weekly offertory collection and will provide each parish family with the opportunity to reevaluate their weekly contribution. If you are financially able, please take the time first to pray. Put also this into prayer and reflect upon my request when you receive it in the mail. Next weekend, I will talk more about this initiative and what we will do. We also encourage all parish families to consider giving through online giving. This is a simple, secure, and safe way to give and will enable our parish to formulate a meaningful budget. Please consider enrolling in our online giving program available in our website. We need your prayers, we need your support, and we need all of our parishioners each week and every week this with this most important and necessary effort. We are all St. Saint Augustine. Thank you. Please stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. For your heart 
I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul